Uh, we are back to the study of the Spirit's book. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, last week, we didn't have our meeting as we were there at the UN with Divaldo. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we started Law of Freedom. Um, and uh, I actually went to look with the, of, the, of the difference between freedom and liberty because I thought that you know the original both in, in Portuguese and in French would be more law of liberty than law of freedom, but the better translation for uh, our for the subject here is law of freedom because liberty relates to the environment around you and freedom relates to your own uh, human being your own uh, thoughts. So they are synonyms but they are used in different ways. So we went through natural freedom, we went through slavery, and now we are going to start with freedom of thought and freedom of conscience. Again, thought, just for us before we go there, thought is what we all have, uh, the ability that as long as we are conscious, not, not don't mix with conscience, conscious, which means aware. We have thoughts, incessantly thoughts. The difference between us and the animal kingdom is that animals have fragmented thought. They cannot put thoughts together. And we have continuous thought. We uh, have, uh, we think all the time. So thoughts are an attribute of the spirit and uh, when you put thoughts together and form an opinion about something is what you call conscience, right? So that's the difference between thought and conscience. Um, I'll, I'll read the definition of conscience on, on the dictionary. Um, it's a state of awareness or a sense that one's actions or intentions are either morally right or wrong, along with a feeling of, of, of obligation to do the right thing. This is conscience according to the uh, Webster Marin mission, uh, Dictionary. Um, and also from, the, from that, the difference between liberty and freedom, uh, the term liberty relies heavily on implication of responsibility and duty and attachment to a greater whole society or philosophical belief system. In contrast, freedom means the raw ability to act and do as one's will. So acting on your free will. So that's why freedom is more appropriate to what this law that we are studying here in general, right? Despite both being synonyms, okay? So... Um, Freedom of thought. Philip, can you read for us? 833. Is there anything in human beings that escape all limitations and of which they enjoy absolute freedom? They enjoy unbounded freedom in their thoughts as there is no obstacle to thought. While it may be hindered, thought cannot be extinguished. Again, thought is an individual ability that we have, that we are the only ones that can control it. So when they say hindered here is uh, our own uh, control of our own thoughts. When we try, we are the ones that uh, try to, um, to act or control our thoughts. Now, uh, what they don't say it here, and uh, we going a little bit further, is thought is matter, right? So everything that is not God or the spirits comes from the universal fluid or the cosmic fluid, and it's matter, including our thoughts. So when we are communicating with others via thought, we are uh, when we express a thought, matter. Uh, again, matter in the sense of derivation of the universal fluid goes out. So that's how um, people can read our thoughts. Some people, spirits, more elevated spirits can clearly read our thoughts. Uh, and God, of course, which is, we're going to see in the next question, right? But uh, the control of our thoughts 
is an exercise, individual exercise that uh, we, we have the ability to control some of our thoughts, but not all of them, right? A lot of times we start thinking of things we don't want to think, and it's very difficult to sometimes to control it. So it's an exercise. But uh, we, we have absolute freedom in our thoughts because uh, it's our own. Nobody else around us, the incarnated ones, can uh, read our thoughts in the ample sense. Sometimes some people can uh, read our thoughts in a limited way, but not in a full sense. Because otherwise you start hearing everyone's thoughts all the time, we all go crazy, right? We can barely deal with our own thoughts. Can imagine dealing with other people's thoughts, okay? Okay, questions, comments? Okay, next one. 834, are human beings responsible for their thoughts? They are accountable for them before God. God alone can know our thoughts and condemns or absolves them according to justice. Okay, so um, we are responsible for our thoughts. Like it or not, our thoughts have consequences, right? Um, when, we, when we hate someone, we are sending, uh, it starts with a thought, we are sending the vibration, the negative vibration towards that person. Uh, Chico used to say, you send the copy, you keep the original. So you do more harm to you than you do to the person you hate. But uh, when the spirit says here, God condemns or absolves, it's more in that sense that we always like to reinforce here that this is, these are natural laws. So our thoughts have consequences according to the natural law. If you... Uh, Again, if you hate someone, you are going to attract spirits that maybe want to uh, engage on your hatred because of you or because of the other person. And you are responsible for attracting those spirits because of your thoughts. So once you make this connection with, the other, with these spirits, sometimes to disconnect is not very easy. So that creates consequences. That's what they're saying here. God condemns or absolves them according to justice, right? So when you are having positive thoughts, even if you are making an effort, you're having positive thoughts, you are trying to, through prayers, through elevating your, your mental vibrations, uh, you are more in connection with the the uh, natural laws with the law uh, with God's law, and it, that that's the sense that God absolves because it's not really condemn or absolve in terms of justice because the natural laws are perfect, so God doesn't condemn or absolve anyone. It's just the, the the natural laws are creates consequences for you going against them or going with them. Okay. 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 <clears throat> All right, this was thought. Now we are going to freedom of conscience. Again, conscience is when you have thoughts, you formulate ideas based on your thoughts, and you create um, a concept, right? Um, you have a uh, Forgot the word. You create the the the, the ah. environment. Well, it's not the environment. It's your in your own. You you create an idea, an opinion. This is based on your thoughts, right? The thought is not an opinion. The thought is a thought. When you you put together thoughts and create an opinion, that's when it becomes conscious, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Philip. 835. Is freedom of conscience the natural consequence of freedom of thought? The conscience is an inner thought that belongs to the individual, like all the other thoughts entertained by that person. So the, the, the conscience is, is 
one more than one thought put together right when you when you start analyzing something um so you know something that is happening and you want you create a, a thought uh, you create a a conscience on 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 how you you analyze that uh, spe specific thing so when you study let's uh, talk about um, you know uh, freedom for uh, slaves that we we uh, we study last like, a couple of weeks ago right uh, slaves were legal but you could through your thoughts reach to a level of conscience that you were in favor of freedom of slaves that you thought that uh, having slaves was wrong this is the conscience is you creating an opinion and a judgment on a on a series of thoughts that you have uh, also in uh, in the, with within the environment that you live it doesn't mean that your conscience is is uh, if it's right or wrong is a different story it's just that you create um you you create an idea of what you think of a certain subject right okay this is Paco. yeah this is very confusing very confusing because thought am i responsible is it possible for someone to plant and cultivate a thought in me uh you know and if that is so am i responsible for that thought you know in what sense give me an let's idea. say it, let's let's look at it in terms of uh, influence among peers you understand when people interact they influence each other am i correct maybe influence it it's like a uh it's a, it's a network of of influence among peers among any, any kind of groups you know? Um, uh, individuals in the group. Now, in that interaction, plan uh, thoughts are planted and cultivated. Uh, because uh, you, said that, you said that thought itself is matter. It's not something within me itself. Yeah, thought. Okay. Let's say, um, let's say you look at a chair. Your thought is according to your knowledge, knowledge. This is a chair, but this is not conscience you have no you, you it, the conscious is when you start analyzing i like the 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 chair the colors i didn't like the format as you are your thoughts are creating no. a, a conscious of one what you 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 okay. think of okay conscience then it really means the value judgment that you assign to your thoughts yes exactly Value judgment you assign to your thoughts, and that value judgment could be great, even if I'm if, even if I'm taking drugs because it, it's my conscience tells me it's great. Yeah, I feel good. No, the the conscience doesn't it. mean right or wrong. It just mean that you created a, a, a you have a exactly a, a judgment a of something. A judgment exactly. It's a judgment that you a value judgment that you have created. Okay, yeah. okay. So but that's not thought. Thought is just the, just the what comes to our mind, you know. When you no, look exactly. at something according to your knowledge, you you exactly. know you you have a thought. So you, you think of a caveman. Uh, you look at he looked the caveman looked at an animal and he saw food. You know, I have to kill the animal food. So the thought is is he sees an animal and recognizes. The conscience is I need to kill the animal for me to survive. This is the very basic. Exactly. Concept. A, thought, a, a thought is basically something that is the whatever it is that is devoid of judgment or yeah. feeling like that. And conscience is the inner self kind of mechanism where you assign value judgment. You put your thoughts together to analyze something. That's exactly. when that's the conscience. Okay, which is different again. I spoke in the beginning. It's different of conscious. Being conscious is as being aware, awake, right? Unconscious, conscious and unconscious is being awake or not awake. That's nothing to do with conscience. Okay. 
Well, conscience, conscience still relates to the assignment of right or wrong, good or bad to any thought. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And what is the issue with influences? Influences? Yes. Is influences, it, it could be any, any, any kind of affective or intellectual uh, impacting on another human being. That's what you call an influence. Anything that is impacting another human being, my, my, my behavior could be an influence on another. Yeah, if, I'm drink, if I'm drinking at a bar and I tell someone, come and have a drink with me, I'm influencing that man. That's correct. Yeah. I just want to be clear that my thought is my thought, is my creation, no one else's creation. But oh, that's, that's, my that's... creation may be influenced by many things, by the environment, by other people saying, that's how marketing works, right? That's how advertisement works. Yeah, but, but, but in my influence, the thought is mine, it's my creation. And I'm so responsible for it. No, I agree with the, with the, parent, the, the segment of responsibility. Definitely, I agree with you. Okay, but the, the initial thought, is it coming from me? Or it could be planted in me? Uh, the initial thought can come from a spirit. Exactly. The spirit's, exactly. the spirit's book, they say that the initial thought may come from us directly or maybe from a spirit, you know, exactly. the first exactly. thought. Now, okay. when you pick up this thought and you make something out of it is when you start the, using conscience, right? Yes. So a spirit come to me and then tell me to, to hit elbow here, right? So that's the thought I have. I, I yes. hit elbow. Then I, I analyze my conscience, tell me this is wrong. This is not, I, I may even say, this is not my thought. I would never think of it. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah. then you're not, you're not responsible for that first thought of, of hitting uh, Elmo. You know, it came to you. Something happened that it was planted in you. And then through your conscience, you say, hold it. I'm not, I'm not going to be acting on this. Yes, but not, uh, but also uh, it, the, the thought only came to my mind because my mind was open to receive that thought, right? Okay, yes, 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 oh, definitely, definitely. Because definitely. there are, you know, if, um, uh, well, you know, I, I always use the example of smoking, right? Yeah. Uh, if you never smoke and you have no desire to smoke, a spirit will never try to impose a thought of smoking in your head because they know it's useless. I'm not never going to think about smoking because it's I, I, I don't smoke. Now, uh, if the spirit is able to place a thought in our head, it's because we are open to that thought. You know, uh, in the, the example of, of, of hitting Elmo, um, I have in me the, 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 the opening to hit someone if I'm angry or if I have a, an issue with the person. My conscience tells me that I shouldn't. That is not the right thing. And I'm going to try my best to control these uh, impulses. But it's here, right? Yeah. So that's why the spirit is able to put the thought in my head. Um, because it combines with my own thoughts. Yeah, you got the first hill of ground to cultivate such a thought, yes. Okay. You got the soil right there that we can grow, yes. Okay. All right. If, if, it's, if it's confusing, ask, please. Let us try to fully... Yes, uh, it is. It is confusing. Yes. <laughs> It is confusing. You yeah, know, because you know, now I, I brought another layer, which is uh, the, the, the influence of spirits on our thoughts. But uh, exactly, it, it, it's there in the spirits book, the influence of spirits in our thoughts and actions. They are present much, the spirits say they are much more, there is much more influence than you think. Yes. So we have to consider that. But again, what I do with this, those thoughts 
it's my responsibility and nobody else. You know, the spirit can put a thought in my mind, but how I'm going to react to it is my responsibility. And that's where conscience and goals enters into place, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So just to be clear, we, the, 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 the inspiration, the suggestion, the influence may be external. So when, when Jean received that suggestion, it Elmo, he did not create that thought, he received a suggestion mm -hmm. based on his conscience, which is based on his moral ethical values. He will create a thought now based on what he received in association with his conscience, his moral ethical values, say, no, I'm not gonna go into Elmo or Good idea. I'm gonna go ahead to help. Now that's his creation. He was influenced, or he received a suggestion. He put that 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 suggests to a filter his conscience, moral ethical values, and then he act. He create a new thought, and he may or may not act on that thought. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, once you thought of it, you're there to the see. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, jo John, oh, go, go ahead. The bad influence, but we have, we can have the good influences also, right? Yes. The spirit, yes. and it's up to us because sometimes. We... Yes, thank God. Yes, like I was saying, yeah. yes, we have uh, we have good spirits uh, surrounding us and trying to help us and influence us all the time. We are the ones that close our our ears to them, but yes. But again, they know also uh, who we are. So they know how, how, how what type of, uh, of incentive they can bring to us. So, so that's why when we talk about spirits um, that are, that are uh, not able to receive the, the, the help and assistance in the spiritual world uh, when they are in the lower zones, they close themselves to the help. The spirits are there to help, but they cannot do anything because the spirit doesn't know. So uh, if I'm, you know, if I have a, 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 a good disposition in, uh, you know, in, in, in helping others, then the spirits will try to motivate me, try to make me move on these uh, good intentions. But if I have no desire or whatsoever of helping others, the spirits are not going to, to try to, because it's, it's never going anywhere, right? They will want to, and they will use any small window of opportunity. If I, any time in my life I said, hmm, maybe I should help that person, then they will take this opportunity and, and bring the, the incentive. But if I have, if I have no desire, they can't, right? So that's why it's important for us to elevate our vibrations, to open ourselves so they can bring us what we need in terms of good uh, influences. Yeah. Carol. John, Carol here. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering how much freedom of conscience we would have as a young child, let's say between zero and seven, because we're being formatted constantly. Uh, the thinking process is not yet developing. So it will, but uh, you know, is there a point in which we do cross that line in which we start thinking for ourselves? It's something after age seven or in the teens? Um, I think that, uh... You know, conscience is something that we have since we we begin uh, having uh, coordination of, of our thoughts, right? But uh, it's very uh, basic in young children. Uh, but you know, you see two, three year old with all that with with opinions, right? Uh, sometimes they are funny. True. Sometimes they are <laughs> oh, so yeah. that's conscience, right? It's basic. Okay. 
but it is conscious. Of okay. course, you, 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 the freedom is limited by uh, the, the surroundings and the education and things like that. And it's the best opportunity to help and assist them. But, uh, but you know, my understanding is that as, as, as soon as you are able to put two thoughts together, you start developing the conscience, right? Oh, okay, thank you. That's helpful. Thank you, John. Okay. Thanks, Philip. Eight thirty six. Do human beings have the right to restrain the freedom of conscience? No more so than the freedom of thought, because God alone has the right to judge the conscience. Human society governs the relations between human beings through the use of laws created by human beings, while God governs the relations between people and God by the law of nature. So um, human beings, they have the right is, uh, they don't, they shouldn't have the right, but human society governs the relations and imposes limitations on how we can express our freedom of conscience. So uh, you live in a, you know, in, in Russia nowadays, it's very difficult to express uh, opposition to the situation that is happening there, to the war and everything. So the conscience of many, uh, Russians, I'm sure it's it's against of what's happening there, but they cannot express. They still have the freedom. They can think about it, but they cannot express because it's uh, restricted by uh, humans, right? So your conscience in the sense of uh, your um, inner thoughts put together and making a uh, 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 an opinion or something is between us and God, as they say here. But when you try to express this freedom of conscience in a society you live in, you may be restricted by human laws. And uh, we see cases of persecution and, uh, and problems with freedom of conscience, right? And uh, we see this in more advanced uh, countries and in less advanced countries, right? Uh, in terms of... of uh, Pro, uh, pro developed countries and less developed countries. And uh, the next the next question talks about the effect of imposing uh, uh, restrictions on freedom of conscience in society. 837? Yeah. What is the effect of the restraints imposed on the freedom of conscience? It forces people to act in a manner that conflicts with their thoughts and therefore makes them hypocrites. Freedom of conscience is one of the characteristics of true civilization and progress. Again, um, the word hypocrites here, it's not in the sense, in the negative sense of uh, you being false. It's just that sometimes you have to act against your conscience because it's the only way to survive and to preserve your freedom. Um, you know, if uh, you go to the streets in Russia to protest against the war, you get arrested. So you are going to keep your thoughts to yourself if you want to preserve your freedom, your liberty. Now, that makes you a hypocrite. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, in the sense of the definition of the word, yes. In the sense that we interpret the word in a negative connotation, no. Okay, that's important for us to make this difference. Uh, but, and then the spirit says, freedom of conscience is one of the characteristics of true civilization and progress. So everyone, every place that restricts freedom of conscience, are preventing progress and are uh, not fully civilized. Again, this is within the limitations of, we're going to get there, right? 
you are um, acting on your freedom of conscience as long as you're not causing harm to others because then it's a whole different story right that we're going to get later right in, in some questions down the road because um you have to to respect those around you right when you are causing harm to others with your freedom of conscience you are abusing your uh your freedom of conscience and uh you 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 should uh you you may be restrained in expressing it because it, uh, it's uh it, it's causing harm to others okay good 838 yeah should every belief be respected even when it is completely false and for every belief is worthy of respect when it is sincere and when it leads to practicing good actions. Reprehensible beliefs are those that lead to the practice of evil. Okay, so we're talking here about beliefs. What are beliefs? Thoughts put, to, put together and creating a conscience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you have a belief. Uh, when your belief is sincere and leads to practicing good actions, that's very important, uh, is worthy of respect. Whenever leads to the practice of evil, then is not, it, sh it should be um, treated according to what, the, what it can cause, right? Human laws exist for that. So for those that, uh, that uh, believe that um, the, the white race is, uh, is above every, all the others and that there should be the only one that survived like the Nazis, right? That's a belief that causes, leads to the practice of evil, should be uh, fought against. Okay, so that's what they are talking about here. If you have a belief uh, that is that helps others, that helps society to evolve, that should be respected, even if it's not the same belief that you have. Again, those. So when we talk about religions here, sincere belief for those that follow their religions and work to help society with their beliefs should be respected and admired even if you have different beliefs so um, someone that is an atheist and practices good all the time should be respected they are not causing any harm and their belief is their personal um, issue with that they have their own conscience right so that's the, what the, the spirits are trying to, 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 to represent to us here, the difference between belief that leads to us practicing good actions, that worthy is worthy of respect, whatever they are, and beliefs that cause us to, to may cause us to cause harm to others. Okay. Okay. Right. 839. Yeah. Is it wrong to offend those whose beliefs are different than ours? This demonstrates a lack of charity and infringes on the freedom of thought. That's a very interesting question in the society you live today, right? We have so many beliefs that are very opposing to each other and we keep um, offending uh, one another because of those beliefs. And that's lack of charity, whatever are these beliefs. I was reading about uh, a college, someone that uh, had very conservative views uh, and beliefs that went to speak in, in, in a college and uh, the students didn't allow him to speak. They start screaming and uh, they start bullying him and he couldn't speak. This is lack of charity. You know, it's you go back to the phrase of uh, I think was um, Rousseau. Rousseau, right? 
uh, I don't agree with anything what, of what you say, but I will defend 100% your right to say it. That's true freedom, uh, respect on freedom of thoughts, right? If you want to have a balanced opinion about something, you need to be able to listen to both sides of the story, right? Even if you already know, we, of course, <clears throat> we all have preconceived ideas. So you are going to go to listen to someone <clears throat> that thinks completely different than you, you are probably not going to agree with anything that they say, right? But it's our responsibility to ourselves if we want to grow intellectually and morally to listen to opinions different but than ours. I have, I have to, may I make a comment? Yes, please. Okay, what about if in my expressing my beliefs, I am actually just, I'm going back to the other, the other question. In expressing my belief, I'm kind of implying with it the practice of evil. Am I, am I are we allowed to, to, are you going to allow me to uh, speak up my mind? Um, if, if my words, the one, the words that I'm saying, you know, it, it's, it's really, it's really basically cultivating evil in the minds of the ones that are listening to me. Yes, you are going to be responsible for uh, all your actions. If your words transform into actions of others, uh, yes. And uh, it is a, a, a very thin line between allowing people to, uh, to call for violence and to use their beliefs to, to, to cause harm to others. Uh, that has to be... Um, controlled in a sense of course, right? yes. um, because yes. that's why we have human laws we you know you are not supposed to uh, to express thoughts that can generate violence right so if you know that someone is going to 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 go and give a speech calling people to to, to arms, to cause violence, you should prevent this, uh, try to prevent this from happening because it can cause harm. Again, the idea, if, if it's going to cause harm, you should prevent. Exactly. Okay, but yeah. the example I gave here, it was just someone that had uh, conservative views and wanted to discuss their, his conservative views in a college, in a liberal college. The college invited him. Uh, he should have the right to express his beliefs. You, need, you don't need to agree with a single one of them. But if his beliefs are not causing any harm, they are just beliefs, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, if you say I'm against um, something because I, in my beliefs, go against, it's against God's law. But this doesn't cause any violence. It doesn't cause anyone to... To, to to act on it, it's my right to believe. Of course, in. definitely, I agree with that. And, uh, and a lot of the religious beliefs that uh, people have in these countries, in this country or in other countries also, that does not lead to violence have to be respected, right? You, you don't need to agree, and we don't agree with many, but you have to respect. Um, yes. And, and again, I was reading the other day, uh, about uh, one of the religions that um, they say, which is something that we say in spiritism, uh, condemn the sin, never condemn the sinner, right? Which is what we say here, right? If you are, uh, if, if there is a problem, you deal with the problem, but the person that, that caused the problem has the right, as, as, uh, we are all children of God. We all have to have opportunities, right? Uh, again, in nowadays in our in the society we are living, it's very we are facing a lot of challenges because of that. But this is all a learning experience for all of us, for to be able to deal with these situations, right?
Um, and the next one actually talks about uh, false beliefs, right? Philip. 840 is placing obstructions on beliefs that cause social disturbances and infringement on the freedom of conscience. You can only repress action. Belief is inaccessible. Repressing someone from outwardly expressing a belief when those acts are harmful to others is not an infringement of their freedom of conscience as this repression leaves the belief itself entirely free. I like that. Yeah, so you answer that. Wow, very good. Yeah. That's that, exactly that, right? You yeah, have you, you repress have... action because it causes harm. But, uh, you know, if someone believes, uh, truly believes that, uh, you know, something is right or wrong, they're not, it's very difficult. We're not going to be able to change their beliefs if they don't want to believe, right? Um, you know, nobody can convince me that reincarnation does not exist. Right? I believe in reincarnation, actually much more than that. I know that reincarnation exists. So nobody's going to be able to make me change my mind. I believe. Um, it's so that's what they say here. Belief is inac inaccessible. Now, when uh, expressing a belief causes harm to others, then it's not an infringement on their freedom of conscience. Of the course. repression is on their actions, but they can continue believing on what they want, right? They go to jail. Many of these people that act on their uh, their conscience and cause harm to others, they go to jail, they don't change their opinion. They continue to, to, to form the gangs in jail that uh, follow their beliefs, right? Racist or homophobic or political, you know, you, you, that's why you go to, to the prisons and you have the different gangs that uh, control the prisons, right? It's people that were arrested for their beliefs sometimes and uh, because they cause harm to others, of course, you're not, you shouldn't be, be arrested for your beliefs only. There are some countries in the world, world that you are, um, but um, if your belief is, is going to cause harm to others, then you should be repressed. Okay. And the next one, which talks about our present state of things. 841. Out of respect for the freedom of conscience, should we allow the spread of malevolent theories and doctrines? Should we instead try to bring those who are led astray by false principles back to the right path without violating the freedom of conscience. Of course, not only is it possible to bring them back to the right path, but you should attempt to do so. This should be done by following Jesus' as example, using gentleness and persuasion and not by resorting to force, which would be worse than the false belief of those whom you are trying to convert. If there is something that ought to be imposed, it is goodness and fraternity. But we do not believe that the means for doing so is violence. Beliefs cannot be imposed by violence. Okay, so the spirits are telling us here, how do we deal with those that are led astray by false principles, right? Uh, and again, they believe their false principles are the truth. Uh, the first question is that we have to ask ourselves is, are, are they really uh, false? Because, or they're just a different opinion than ours, right? Uh, we have to, that's the first question we should ask. And if we know that they are led astray by false principles, how we bring that back them back it may not be possible but the spirits are clear to us we have to follow jesus example using gentleness and persuasion when we have our family discussions that uh, nowadays are becoming more and more complicated because of different 
opinions in politics and other things. If you get angry, and we get angry, and you start arguing, we're not going to get anywhere. It's clear. So only by gentleness and persuasion, we are going to be able to sometimes to make them come a little bit to, to our side. Sometimes it's not possible. But uh, if we don't lose our temper, don't lose our patience, if we keep ourselves calm and, uh, and reasonable, at least it's going to cause an impression, a curiosity. How can they control themselves, you know, when they are not on the other side is not controlling. So we know that uh, by just fighting, uh, we don't get anywhere, right? Um, we, of course, as imperfect spirits, we still struggle. And those that are married know that uh, fights in a marriage is also something that we lose control very easily and go to, to the extremes without being able to reach to a... You enter into a fight to win, not to... to, to uh, to, resolve to, re to reason, yeah, to resolve the issue. And that's the problem with most couples. Uh, <clears throat> but if we think about this, right, that only using patience, gentleness, and persuasion, persuasion, we are going to be able to change uh, because otherwise it's going to just create more problems. And again, beliefs cannot be imposed by violence, right? We cannot convince anyone to, to become anything by imprisoning them. We have a long history and a lot of us, the majority of us have traumas of previous incarnations when we were forced to believe in something that we didn't want to believe. Religions, right? The Christian religion, Christianity try to impose their beliefs and force people to change to Christianity by means of violence throughout history. And that only created problems um, and created traumas that we are still dealing with it uh, centuries later. Uh, we should have learned by now that the violence doesn't doesn't solve, but still we have fan, fanatics in all religions trying to impose their beliefs on others through violence. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't, the consequences are very difficult. Okay. All right, last one. Because free will, we are going to leave for next week. It's another very interesting subject. There is a lot to talk about. So we're not going to start free will today. We're going to leave for next week. But we still have one question of this. Philip. 842. All doctrines claim to be the sole expression of the truth. How can we recognize the one that is most deserving of this title? The truest doctrine is the one that has the fewest hypocrites and the greatest number of truly virtuous individuals. In other words, people practicing the law of charity in its greatest purity and its widest application. This is how you may recognize a true doctrine, because any doctrine that causes rifts between God's children is nothing but false and evil. Again, um, we follow the examples, right? Uh, Francisco, Francis of Assisi said, uh, go and preach, and if necessary, use words. words. <laughs> so that's what, go and preach by example. So if we want to look at the true um, doctrines, are the ones that... Uh, lead by example in, in helping others. Even if uh, they, they claim that they are the only 
truth. Uh, if they respect others and they don't try to impose their beliefs on others, they work for the benefit of all those that uh, they can. That is a, a doctrine that, um, that is worth uh, following, right? Um, Chico once said, Chico Xavier once said that uh, if, if, if spiritism said that without spiritism there is no salvation, he wouldn't be a spiritist. Because without charity there is no salvation. And charity is found everywhere, right? You look at the example of Mother Teresa. Wouldn't you like to follow her if uh, you were, you know, working close to her? She leads by example, right? The beautiful work that she, do, she did. This is the, the expression of truth. Uh, is it relevant? What were her particular beliefs in terms of religion? Not really, right? The example is what uh, made the difference, right? Um, you look at the work that Divaldo does in, in uh, Mansão do Caminho, and uh, the benefit that he brought to do all those there that uh, he could help on, on these 70 years since he opened Mansão do Caminho, Mansion of the Way. Does it matter if he's a spiritist or it's not a spiritist? Uh, if, you, if you don't know what you want to, to believe and you look at his work and for, oh, if he's a spiritist, then I want to be a spiritist because of his example. That's fine, the example, right? But, um, you know, it, you don't need to, uh, to, you shouldn't follow words, you should follow examples. Uh, the, the, what the spirit says here, they say here is that uh, the, the institutions that help others are the ones that will continue growing because they will attract more people, more volunteers, more people willing. Those that cause divisions and discriminations, it's just a matter of time. They, they will disappear uh, again. Maybe we won't see this incarnation or the next, but uh, it, the law of progress is the, not the law of division. So every doctrine that causes division that causes, creates rifts between uh, them and others or within them, they, they don't have a, a, a future or they will have to change. And we see that in many religions that uh, are losing uh, followers because of uh, division is because of problems inside the, the religions and things like that, right? Uh, the uh, you see the evangelicals dividing themselves in uh, thousands of different uh, denominations, right? Why do they need thousands of denominations? Because they cannot agree on the basic principles, right? Uh, Catholics losing people there also because they cannot follow the uh, the restrictions, right? And all the other religions have uh, have the problems when they they become too strict okay Ed, uh i just want to make a comment that uh sure. you, you mentioned about you know division and rift and discrimination but also uh, you know also i'm thinking about a guilt you understand here in spiritualism you give me at least you're giving me the, the, the option that I have a conscience. So ultimately, my conscience is going to determine whatever. You understand? Yeah. So it's not the Pope. It's not, you know, the priest. It's not, I don't know. I, mean, I guess I'm overreacting, but you get my drift. <laughs> you get my drift. Yeah, but, but you know, spiritism calls us also, always to, to reason, to, to, rest, to think. To think Thanks. ourselves and something that uh, we always say here, if something that uh, spiritism tells you, you don't feel comfortable with it, go deeper, study more or put it aside 
because you are not supposed to accept everything that comes because you know because i say or elmo says or any anyone <laughs> says because we may be also misrepresenting what we have learned right we have to make our own uh, analysis and, and judgment right the problem is that people when you become fanatic when you don't think you just follow right Someone, that... someone tells me that uh, you have to go and fight for the right to, you know, to to kill whoever thinks different than you. And I just follow because I, you know, I don't think about it. It's fanaticism. And fanaticism is always a problem, whatever it is. Uh, really, oh, yeah. fanaticism has been a problem for thousands of years. And continue to be a problem. Uh, but the solution is not eliminating religions. The solution is, elimin is, is fighting against fanaticism, right? Okay. All right. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So we stop here. Thank you for the discussions. Um, so we have for this weekend, on Saturday, the lecture by the United States Spiritist Federation. It will be given by your truths only me. <laughs> so I invite you all to watch me on Saturday, 11 a.m. I'm going to talk about book four of the Spirit's book. So April is the month that uh, is the anniversary of the release of the Spirit's book. It's going to be 166 years on April 18. And uh, so I'm going to talk about book four of the Spirit's book, Hopes and Consolations. Okay, you're all invited this Saturday, 11 a.m. through the United States Spiritist Federation uh, YouTube or Facebook or the International Spiritist Council uh, YouTube page. And on Sunday, we are starting a new book. We are starting between heaven and earth. We finished liberation last month, or this month, actually, because we're still not in April. We finished liberation this month, and we are going to start between heaven and earth. Uh, we are going to do the introduction, chapter one. Chapters are small, so maybe we'll do chapter two also. There are 40 chapters in this book. Um, uh, liberation had 20 chapters or longer chapters. So we may, if we have time, we'll do chapter two. If not, we'll do the introduction and chapter one. So it's between heaven and earth. Uh, you can, if you don't have the book, you can get it uh, online. Uh, or if you want to uh, here at the center we have, if you, you can buy through our um, webpage also. Okay. And um, the series psychology and spirituality that uh, it's i think it's fourth on fifth i think it's the sixth class is tomorrow at 7 p.m our time and uh for those that uh, want to study more of joanna de angelis uh, which is a very very good course also okay um carol can you do our final prayer Yes, thank you very much, John, and everyone for participating. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we are grateful again to be together as brothers and sisters for our study of the Spirit's book, our topic being the law of freedom and conscience. Thoughts are matter. Beliefs and opinions are value judgments that we assign to our thoughts. Putting together thoughts can become conscience. Freedom of conscience is an elevated characteristic of true civilization and progress. Sincere beliefs should be respected. If they are not causing any harm, we should be responsible and charitable by listening to both sides of the issue. May goodness and fraternity prevail and may we recognize false principles and violent actions are not helpful. We try to re reduce polarization and stay centered and balanced. 
We give thanks to our spiritual benefactors, the good spirits, the helpers, the teachers who are with us, guiding us and inspiring us. May we receive the inspiration to continue more of our in-depth study so that we can put into practice these lessons each day. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us, helping us, guiding us, keeping our hearts and minds open, and being of greater service, greater in our actions to be charitable and helpful to bring the consciousness of the planet as well up. We are continuing our prayers and our studies throughout the week, and may we remind ourselves to be mindful keeping in touch with our thoughts that they do not go astray, that we are handling the activity of our mind and our thinking process. May we humbly ask now for safety and protection as we go forth to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. And may we send our prayers to those who are suffering in the spiritual world, as well as those who are in great need in the physical world. For we know that comfort, healing, guidance, and reassurance is so necessary to help each and every person who is evolving in this world to find peace, to find inner strength, to continue on their journey. We ask now for the safety and protection as we go forth to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. May we remind ourselves to be beacons of light, going forth in peace, in love, in light, and in service with charitable activity. So be it. So be it.